Yep. Thanks for tuning in. This is the second episode of my film review series. Today we're going to be talking about the 2011 film Drive, starring Ryan Gosling, Carey Mulligan, and Brian Cranston. If you haven't checked out my first film review, you can check that out on YouTube. The channel is Drew's Reviews, and that's a review on 310 to Yuma, starring Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. Anyways, though, I'm really excited to talk about this film. Uh, I have a lot of stuff to say about it, some good, some bad, and let's just do it. Let's get into it. So how I found this film, kind of a weird story, um, but I'll get into that right now. So when I would use Google Drive, I would always find this link to IMDB about a movie called Drive. And I clicked on a link enough and read about it enough, and I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. The first thing that really stood out to me about this movie is the plot, and I don't want to go into too much detail and ruin it and spoil. On the surface, it really doesn't look like much, just kind of your average movie, but in reality, it really goes super deep. And what I mean by that is, throughout the film, you start seeing things that start to piece together and really make sense. And if you're someone who's like really into a plot that includes a lot of detail and a lot of easter eggs and things of that nature, then I think this film's for you. That kind of leads into my next observation about the movie, which was the character development, and specifically I'm going to be looking at Ryan Gosling, who plays the lead role as the driver. Yeah, that's right. We really don't know too much about this guy, we don't even know his name, he's just referred to as the driver. And if you haven't read the description below the video, about the movie, I'll just give you a brief description right now. So basically, the driver is a mechanic in the day and a stunt double performer who works for Brian Cranston, who plays the role of Shannon. And Shannon has connections to the mob through his stunt double managing and movie production involvement. And meanwhile, at night, the driver serves as a getaway man for criminals throughout Los Angeles. As the movie starts off, we're slowly getting to know the driver, and from what we can see, he's a quiet guy. He keeps to himself, he goes to work, he works hard, he gets up and does it all again. Per usual, blue collar attitude. Throughout the film though, we kind of see him slowly turn into a monster who's living a double life and he's driven to extreme behavior because of his feelings for Carrie Mulligan who plays Irene, the single mom who lives down the hallway from him. The driver definitely sees the most screen time but the character development for lesser roles such as Shannon and even Oscar Isaac's role as standard show the depth of character development that I think really exceeds expectations given the amount of screen time they receive. The driver and Shannon seem to have similar types of development, as in they're super shady guys, and there's more to their story than we're first led to believe when we're introduced to them. For example, in the case of Shannon, you're kind of led to believe that he brought on the driver as a mechanic and a stunt double just to help him out and give him a job, when in reality he's trying to use him in order to strike riches through his aspirations to be a race car driver manager for the driver. Plus he's involved in the mob, I mean that's pretty shady just to say that right off the bat. And even for the driver like I referenced earlier, through the eyes of the characters in the movie, you're led to believe that He's just an innocent blue-collar worker getting by each day when, in reality, he's living a double life. The best feature of the movie, in my opinion, is the cinematography. There's no shortage of stunning shots and visuals throughout the film, and it was one of the main reasons I kept watching. The first 10 minutes of the film are some of the most intriguing moments to open a movie that I have ever experienced because of these aspects. And I honestly think that the strong opening set the film up with too high of standards to follow for the remainder of the film. Not in terms of cinematography, but in terms of intensity and plot points. For example, it becomes clear how important time is in the film. Yet, the theme of time peaks in the opening in my opinion, and isn't really built upon as strongly as it could have been. This wasn't the only point in the film where I thought the cinematography excelled. A car chase scene towards the middle of the movie, and scenes at the end also captured my attention without much resistance. You see all types of shots, long shots, extreme long shots, close-ups, extreme close-ups, middle shots, bird-eye view shots, 
all different types of camera angles, all different types of camera movements, all different types of lighting, dark lighting, natural lighting, you name it, it's in it, and it's awesome. However, the opening minutes of this movie are outstanding and set the tone of the cinematography elements that were praised by critics after the film's release. Like, I even enjoyed watching the opening credits for this movie. It was truly an awesome experience. So the big question, did I like the movie? Eh, yes and no. I love the cinematography of the movie, and what I mean by that is, like, I love the lighting, the scene setup, the variety of shots and angles that were used, and just, like, the vibe of the film. And what I mean by that is, like, so the film takes place in L.A., I kind of focus around the stunt double, movie production industry, and I feel like all those factors, like the lighting, the shots, the credits, the fonts used in the credits, like it all merged together to kind of fit like these generalizations about the Los Angeles scene, Hollywood, and all that stuff. I will say it's pretty dark of a movie. It's really violent, it's really gory, and... That's something that I'm personally not into, and if you know me, you can definitely attest to that. So just a heads up for that. You know, would I watch it again? Possibly. I rarely ever just watch a movie once and that's it, except if I absolutely hate it. And like, that wasn't the entire case with this film. There's good and there's bad in it. And it's only 100 minutes long too, so like, it's not that difficult to just sit down and get through it. So I would definitely be open to re-examining this film would I recommend this film? That's a tough question. If you love action, if you love car chases, if you like extreme violence, then yes. If you want to see beautiful cinematography, then yes. If that's something you're not entirely into, then I don't think it's that big of a deal if you don't watch it. So thanks for tuning in to this episode. Uh, we'll be back on next week with a new movie. Uh, hopefully you check that out too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you.